typical night is after the VOA closes, if I had no, haven't already thought of a place safe to sleep, that's what I'm trying to do, trying to find a safe place to sleep. Well, I think when the, the dark comes down, um, you be bewildered and um, you don't even know exactly what to do. Unless you're bleeding or pregnant, there is no place. You live in the car, you live in a bush, you hide behind a dumpster, you pray that the cops don't arrest you or roust you and throw you out. You pray you don't get molested, raped, mugged. Basically, I gave up. If there was a God, why would he do this to my child? I mean, I could, it could be okay for me to be out there. But for, for my son, if there's a God, why would, why would my son have to go through that? I mean, he didn't do nothing. And I was really agnostic anymore. I was like, is there really a God? I try not to, to judge people uh, too harshly because I remember when I used to be that same person doing the same exact thing. And no, it's not a good feeling um, to know that you have the same capabilities as the person that's looking at you and pretending like you don't exist. We have to carry everything. And then um, what you can't carry, you try and hide. And what you hide gets stolen. <laughs> so it's a... That's the most painful thing. That's the most painful. Because you got to look that child in the face and say, my God, what am I doing? And you pray a lot that they don't know that it doesn't hurt them, that when they grow up, they don't remember it. I mean, because it's not like I didn't want to work and I, I didn't want to, I just wanted to lay around and drink and party. And it's like I tried, you know, but I just needed a little step up to get where I need to be. If it wasn't for them helping with food, sack lunches and stuff like that, we wouldn't have made it, we wouldn't have had food for the next day. When I left there, I told my son, there's a God. And then my son, every day, he's like, there is a God, Mommy. You know, he helps me through this too. And the nurses that come out there are awesome, giving us uh, whatever medication we need that's not on prescription. They greet you with a hug and a kiss. and. Uh, They do it. They end with a prayer. And they give you what you need. Someone that stole my bag, had my birth certificate, my cell phone. If it were not for Penn Ministries, I wouldn't be able to get an ID. By them doing that, they also helped me get a job that I was trying to get. I don't know what I'd do without y'all. I really wouldn't. From, um, from clothes on my back, to being clean, then I had nobody else. I have nobody else. And y'all were there for me. Because of uh, drugs and alcohol, um, uh, I found myself in trouble with the law. And, uh, and at the same time, uh, God was directing me in, the, in that direction. And that's the way I saw it. Um, you know, he, pointed me to forefront and from forefront to you know, pen and the whole nine yards. People didn't give up on me. I'm not going to give up on them. And um, that's, um, that's the way I see it. I, I have to keep coming back. My first um, time with Penn was on Christmas. Um, we went to Grand Affairs and um, we had Christmas dinner with everyone. 
It, it really opened my eyes. Um, I saw that there was a great need. You know, I feel like if you can just reach out and touch one person um, out of the many, then, you know, we're doing a good thing. Hi, my name is Dallas Stamper and I'm the president of Penn Ministry. And we are so excited about what God is doing through our organization, but we know there's still so much that needs to be done. Penn Ministry is a 501c3 nonprofit organization that exists to provide food, clothing, shelter, and free medical care for people that are either homeless or extremely poor. Ultimately, the focus is on meeting them where they are and sharing a God that loves them and wants to be in relationship with them. Our short-term goals are to build a transitional house. This house will be used as a safe place for homeless people to live while they're getting their lives back together. Penn will make sure that if they need drug or alcohol counseling, that's available for them. And we're also going to make sure that they have the proper job skills to get and maintain a job. Penn will offer biblical spiritual guidance to help the residents of this transitional house to keep their lives on the right track. We'll have rules and structure in place to help them get a job and a residence that they can keep for a long time. Our long-term goal is to open an emergency shelter. As you saw earlier in the video, the streets are a dangerous place. And what this emergency shelter would be is a place of rescue to get them out of that environment. And what we would do is offer them the opportunity to change their lives. Now you're sitting there and you're probably wondering what is the role that you're going to play in this. We have a program called Penn Partners, which are churches, businesses, and individuals that have decided to partner with us in our mission. So what is a Penn Partner? A Penn Partner is someone who has decided they can no longer sit there and do nothing when people are living on the street. A Penn Partner has decided to make a difference in a person's life. They've decided to change an individual, a community, the world. So how can you become a PIN partner? You could decide to support us financially. You could pray for PIN ministry and the homeless of Hampton Roads, or you could volunteer your time. If you'd like to join us in our mission, you can contact me at dallas.stamper at pinministry.org or call the PIN ministry office at 757-962-3567. Or you can become a PIN partner by simply going to our website at www.pinministry.org. Together, we can make a difference.